The sixth step of molding is to lay up the part. You will first want to brush on a surface coat. You could use the Akimi product that we use to build the mold, a gel coat for a polyester part, or as Dennis prefers, a layer of epoxy resin and silica. Dennis adds the silica to the epoxy to thicken it because running or sagging could harm the finished appearance. Silica should not be used, however, to make the resin paste we used before. Often silica pastes do not cure properly. This surface coat will ultimately be the outside surface of the fiberglass cowling. The purpose of this surface coat is to color the part, add gloss, and usually to prohibit the glass pattern from showing through. If you wanted a red part, for instance, you would add red pigment to this surface or gel coat. In this case, Dennis intends to paint the surface, so he is only concerned that the surface coat provide a smooth surface, free of pinholes, and that it is thick enough to keep the glass pattern from coming through. A single layer of surface coat is applied and allowed to cure for about 20 minutes, just enough to set up and pass the same brush test which was used on the Akimi surface coat. Now that I have the complete surface of the mold covered with a thin layer of epoxy, I'll need to spend time every few minutes as the epoxy will run down the side and just pull up with a brush with a light stroke to keep the uh, resin up on the walls of the, the mold. Because the cowling has some small edges, Dennis mixes a small batch of the number 22 paste. He sparingly fills in small voids. Excess resin is not desirable because resin alone without fiberglass is not particularly strong and can be quite brittle. But filling these small areas in is preferable to possibly leaving a void causing a weak spot. Behind the paste, he lays down a light base coat of resin, careful to avoid the paste. If the resin were to mix with the paste, it would dilute it, which could cause the paste to run or sag. He is now ready to begin laying up the reinforcement layers. We can take our first layer of four ounce cloth and we'll lay that in the mold. Just gently wet it in with my fingers. Careful here, not disturbing the paste, but gently just pushing it down in. Once I get the fabric positioned, I'll take the brush and apply just a little bit of resin to help saturate some of the dry areas. Working the seam together there in the middle where there's a split, making sure all the mold is covered. And anything that we miss on this layer, the second layer will cover. This is where we want to be careful that we, if we see any air bubbles, we want to try to push them out with our brush, just gently squeezing and blotting with our brush against any air that we see and it'll work its way out. Making sure that we have plenty of resin all the way up to the edge and a little bit past the edge of the mold, which will help uh, in trimming the mold, make that top part a little hard. Make sure we brush on these real well. Okay, we got that saturated pretty well. Now we can lay in our next layer, which is a layer of six ounce. Same way we laid the uh, four ounce in. Positioning it. You 
using our fingers, positioning the seam, taking a brush and add just a little bit of resin to where the dry areas are and help wet that out. You can see where it's obvious where the areas are dry. Once you blot it out and wet the material out, it tends to disappear into the other layer and it looks all like one single layer. Okay, now that we have the laminate completely saturated and wetted out, I take an ordinary ball of Kleenex or toilet paper, whichever you prefer, and just blot out some of that excess resin that you see puddling in the bottom of the mold. And this will help absorb some of that excess resin. And there's no need to have excess resin in a part like this because it's only going to add weight. These two layers of reinforcement behind a single layer of surface coat and putty are all that is used to make the cowling halves. Both halves are allowed to partially cure for about 30 minutes and then they are trimmed flush with the mold. Now the mold's ready to be trimmed. It is partially cured, soft enough to trim with a knife, similar to how we trimmed the mold. I stick the knife in and just gently come around the edge and trim. carefully cutting right through. As you can see, the resin is not hard. It's still got a little bit of pliability, but it, it cuts real well with the knife. It makes a nice, neat trim. Dennis joins the two halves by using the holes he drilled in his mold. He fastens the mold with number 785 fastening clips. Other means of fastening the mold, such as clamps, are also suitable. He is now ready to seam the halves. First, he has prepared number 88, number 87, and number 22 paste. The paste is used to fill the seam, but is not strong enough to join the halves. Reinforcement is necessary for strength. Therefore, against the wet paste, he laminates in a strip of one inch fiberglass tape with the same 88, 87 epoxy resin. Tape is used because slitting fiberglass fabric results in fraying, which can pull up when laminating. Because the tape is easy to wet out, Dennis simply dips it in his resin and squeezes out the excess with his fingers. Now I take the tape and I lay it down in the center and just pushing it in place with my finger. Now I take a brush just with just a little bit of resin on the end of it, just to wet it a little bit. And now I just saturate or push down and wet out the tape onto the, onto the part. You will remember that this final stage of trimming and seaming is conducted when the part is only about 30 minutes into the cure. At this stage, the part is still soft enough to be trimmed with a knife, and the seam is able to cure into the part while the whole part is still curing. The molding of the fiberglass cowling is now complete. It must be allowed to cure 24 hours before removing it from the mold.